Now, don't get me wrong, I completely understand when it comes to best and worst, top five, top ten lists, they are incredibly subjective things, where a lot of it is based off of personal experience, personal perspective. I get that. There are going to be differences, and that can be some of the fun sometimes when talking about best and worst and top fives and top tens, top fifteens, all of that, is the debate that they naturally generate. And a lot of us are going to have different opinions on things. Most certainly when it comes to the diarrhea that consistently comes from WWE when it comes to their top five and top ten and top fifteen list. Now, some of you are going to say, how can you get mad at them for opinion? How can you sit there and say they're wrong? How can an opinion be wrong? Okay, look, everyone is entitled to an opinion. That is absolutely correct. It's a fundamental tenet of free speech, after all. And I suppose you could argue that opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one, and they all smell like shit. And maybe that's true. But just because it's an opinion doesn't automatically mean that it can't go unchallenged. Just because it's an opinion doesn't mean that it's not wrong. You want some relevant examples of what I'm talking about? Fine, I'll give you a few. It's okay to molest children is probably not an opinion that a rational, reasonable, logical person is going to have. If you hear somebody say, well, I don't think there's any problem with sitting there and grabbing a little kid. Just helping him grow up and mature and become a man or a woman. That's not an opinion that's okay. That opinion is wrong. There's nothing wrong with raping a woman. It's just consent they haven't agreed to yet. Again, rational, reasonable, logical, civilized people would not have an opinion. That opinion is wrong. It's okay to let the homeless starve and die because it's all about freaking survival of the fittest. I would hope that is an opinion that rational, reasonable, logical people, civilized people would not have. And if we had that, we would say that's wrong. Or lynching people is okay. Again, not an opinion that's right. That's wrong. So when you say that an opinion can't possibly be wrong, I say bullshit on that. An opinion can be wrong. Especially if it's just morally and fundamentally wrong, but especially if there's no real logic, rhyme, or reason to back it up. Like if you said Don Cheeto was a bigger movie star than Dwayne The Rock Johnson. On what fucking planet or universe do you live in where Don Cheadle is considered a bigger movie star than Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Now, if you said, I think Don Cheadle is a better actor than Dwayne The Rock Johnson, that is a much more subjective thing. That is something that is much more open to an interpretation, and a lot of people probably agree Cheadle's a better overall actor than The Rock. But you can debate and discuss that. But there is no real tangible measurement to back up Don Cheadle being a bigger movie star than The Fucking Rock. So that is an opinion that is flat out wrong. It's what you call Skip Baylessing through the world and you hope you can make a few million dollars a year like that fucking cluck does to sit there and spit those type of inaccurate and just flat out wrong false opinions, narratives, lacking context. You can also call it the Colin Cowherd effect. But when I see the WWE put out this fight, this one, the top five betrayals in WWE history, this goes beyond just opinion being different. This just goes beyond a different perspective. This just goes down to agenda-driven propaganda that is insulting to the history of the company, the performers there now, the performers there before, and insults the fans' intelligence. Let me break down the top five betrayals in WWE history. Number five, the Bella Sluts ambushing Ronda Rousey. Really, in the history of WWE and all the betrayals we've had throughout history, it's not Andre the Giant risking the crucifix off of Hulk Hogan and challenging him to a match for the World Championship at the WrestleMania. It's fucking Bree and Nikki Bella ambushing Ronda Rousey. Are you fucking kidding me? Number four, Kevin Owens turning on Chris Jericho during the Festival of Friendship. Now sure, maybe a lot of you thought that was really cool, but would you really truly put that in the top five betrayals of all time? 
Number three, okay, HBK turns on Marty Jannetty in the barbershop. Most people would point to that as a possible top five of all time thing. Number two, evolution dumps Randy Orton. Hell, if you want to talk about pure betrayals when it comes to evolution, more people probably think it's memorable when Batista went thumbs down and fucking turned on evolution and damn self after winning the 2005 Royal Rumble. That's not even the best freaking evolution betrayal. And number one, of course, the height and the epitome of recency bias and bullshit and propaganda to try and falsely prop up your current performers and your current characters at the expense of everybody else. Seth Rollins turning on the shield. Now look, for some of you that have only been fans for a couple of years, it might have been the greatest betrayal you've ever experienced. That's true. But again, in all the history and all the time of WWE, that's the greatest betrayal of all time? Not Austin betraying the fans and aligning with Vince McMahon at WrestleMania 17. Not Shane McMahon buying WCW out from his father in 2001. Nothing like that. Not Savage turning on Hogan, the Mega Powers exploding in 1989. None of that crap. The Rock betraying the people and joining the corporation. You could go on and on and on and on and on and on with all these great betrayals. I only named a couple of them throughout the course of WWE history. The freaking zip line betraying Owen Hart. Just saying. Too soon? But the top five betrayals of all time in WWE history involve the Bella Sluts, Kevin Owens, Evolution, dumping Randy Orton, and Seth Rollins turning on the shield. Give me a fucking break. I call bullshit. You know what this is exactly about. When you look at this, look at all the names pretty much on the list. The Bella Sluts, Ronda Rousey. They're going to be headlining that Evolution show in a couple of weeks. Kevin Owens, probably at the time this list was originally formulated, was probably planned to be performing at that Crown Jewel event in Saudi Arabia. HBK, going to be there at that Crown Jewel event. Evolution. Worst case scenario, you could say they're going to be at the 1000 SmackDown episode, but some of them are also going to be there at Crown Jewel. Seth Rollins, Ambrose, Roman Reigns, they're there at the Crown Jewel. They're a big part of the company. So all the company is doing is undercutting their history, making their past stars, who they always want to keep bringing back, look like shit. By coming up with these recency bias propaganda bullshit lists that real fans know are bullshit. This is not an opinion. This is propaganda done with a purpose and it's wrong and it's crap. It's absolute garbage. And anybody that prescribes to this and is okay with the WWE doing this is also garbage. Give me a fucking break. The Bella Sluts Ambushing Ronda Rousey is a greater is a greater betrayal than Andre ripping the crucifix off of and turning on Hulk Hogan. The hell type of world we live in. And even if you want to talk about the politics of involving Hogan, what a disrespect to Andre the Giant and his importance and his legacy to that company throughout its history. And all the other guys and all the other betrayals you've ever had. And this is the list that you come up with. The person that wrote this, I hope they enjoy cashing their checks because they should be goddamn ashamed of themselves. And if they did this on their own and they legitimately think these are the top five betrayals of all time, then they should never be allowed to write anything for the WWE website again and should be permanently banned from professional wrestling sports entertainment, whatever the hell you want to call it. It's like when they call the shield the greatest faction of all fucking time. Based off of what? A couple of years where they ultimately made a couple of mediocre stars out of the deal. Just chock full of memorable moments and memorable matches, right? Ah, good faction. Pretty good faction, yes. But in all of the history of professional wrestling, in all of the history of WWE, you're going to say that they were better than somebody like a D-Generation X? Any other factions you could think of? They weren't even fucking better than Evolution! 
It's this type of shit right here that aggravates me. It's this type of shit, this revisionist history, all for the purpose of trying to artificially prop up the here and now that makes the past look bad, that you always feel like you have to go back to, and in the process, you wonder why. You wonder why, when you go back to the past, it doesn't carry as much of an impact, because you've done everything you possibly could to diminish it and demean it and belittle it along the fucking way so you can artificially prop these suck guys up and these gals up where they know they don't deserve it, the fans know they don't deserve it, and you know they don't fucking deserve it. So all you've done is insult the fans' intelligence, and they can see through this bullshit, and they most certainly, I would hope to God, know better, and they don't buy into it, and they sit there and start to resent it. It's the kind of scene of Roman Reigns effect. you got to go to these lengths to prop these guys up. you got to go to these lengths to try and intentionally, willfully mislead your audience. Then I'm not going to buy into them. I'm not going to emotionally invest in them, and I'm never going to believe in them being a big-time star. It's like every time the WWE has a big show, it's the greatest SummerSlam of all time. It's the greatest WrestleMania of all time. Eventually, fans get tired of hearing that message because it's pathetically predictable as a pattern of behavior, and they know it's simply not true. There are many things you can do and get away with, but at some point in time, you cannot intentionally lie and mislead your customers because those chickens are going to come home to roost and they're going to bite you in the ass like they are current state for WWE. Top five betrayals of WWE. They put the Bella sluts on there. Good fucking God. And if anybody agrees with that, if anybody agrees with that at this point in time, then God of you have mercy on us and most importantly of all, professional wrestling. Because there truly will be no saving it if this type of shit is allowed to be put out there as being true.